of God in Christianity. Let's analyze the concept of God in Islam. The best reply that any person can give you regarding the concept of God in Islam is quote to you Surah Ikhlas, chapter number 112, verse number 1 to 4, which says, Qul huallahu ahad. Say he is Allah one and only. Allah hu samad. Allah the absolute and eternal. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He begets not, nor is he begotten. Walam yakullahu kuffan ahad. There is nothing like him. This is a four-line definition of Almighty God, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any person saying that is Almighty God, if that person fits in this four-line definition, we Muslims have got no objection in accepting that person as Almighty God. The first is, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ Say he's Allah one and only. Second is, Allah samad Allah the absolute and eternal. Third is, لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُلَدْ he begets not, nor is begotten. And the fourth is, وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَوْ كُفْفَانْ And there is nothing like him. This Surah class, chapter number 112, is the touchstone of theology. Theo means God, logi means study. Surah class, chapter number 112 of the glorious Quran, is the touchstone of theology. Anyone claiming to be Almighty God, if that candidate fits in this four-line definition, we accept him to be Almighty God. And for the universal brotherhood to prevail, it's compulsory that you believe and worship only one Almighty God. So anyone claiming to be Almighty God, if that person fits in this four-line definition, we have no objection in accepting that candidate as Almighty God. You know there are many false people who claim to be Almighty God. Let's analyze whether they pass the test or not. And one among such person is Bhagwan Rajneesh. You know, there are some people who claim that he was Almighty God. During one of my lectures in the question answer time, there was a Hindu friend of ours who told that the Hindus don't believe in Bhagwan Rajneesh as God. I told him, I do agree, and I've read the Hindu scriptures. Nowhere does the Hindu scripture say that Bhagwan Rajneesh is God. What I said, some people say that Bhagwan Rajneesh is God. I know very well that Hinduism doesn't consider Bhagwan Rajneesh to be God. Let's analyze the claim of such people who say that Bhagwan Rajneesh is Almighty God. The first test is, Qul hu Allahu ahad. Say he's Allah one and only. Is Bhagwan Rajneesh one and only? We know that there are several human beings who claim to be Almighty God, especially in this country. There are several such people claiming to be God. Is he one and only? But his followers may say, no, he is one and only. Let's go to the next test. Allah Husamad, Allah the absolute and eternal. Was Bhagwan Rajneesh absolute and eternal? We know from his biography that you are suffering from asthma, from chronic backache, from diabetes mellitus. And he says that the American government, when they arrested him, they gave him slow poisoning. Imagine Almighty God being slow poisoned. The third test is, Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He begets not, nor is he begotten. And we know from his biography that Rajnish was born in Madhya Pradesh. He had parents, mother and father, who later on became his own disciples. And in the year 1981, Rajnish goes to America and takes thousands of Americans for a ride. And in the state of Oregon, he starts his own village known as Rajnishpuram. Later on, the American government, they arrest him and they put him behind bars. And in 1985, he is deported. He is sent out of the country. He comes back to India in 1985, and the city of Pune, he starts his own center, Dosho Commune. And if you go there, it's mentioned on the stone there that Bhagwan Rajnish, Osho Rajnish, never born, never died but visited the earth from the 11th of December, 1931, to the 19th of January, 1990. They forgot to mention that he was not given visas to 21 different countries in the world. Imagine Almighty God, he is visiting the earth and requires visas. 
And the last test, walam yakullu kuffan ahad. There's nothing like him. It's so stringent that no one besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Almighty God can pass. The moment you can compare Almighty God to anyone in the world, to anything in the world, he's not God. For example, if suppose someone says that Almighty God is a thousand times as strong as Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know Arnold Schwarzenegger? The person who was given the title Mr. Universe, the strongest man in the universe. If someone says that Almighty God is a thousand times as strong as Arnold Schwarzenegger, the moment you can compare Almighty God to anything in this world, whether it be Arnold Schwarzenegger or King Kong or Dara Singh, whether it be a thousand times or a million times, the moment you can compare Almighty God to anything in this world, he is not Almighty God. There is nothing like him. This is a four-line definition of Almighty God given in the glorious Quran, which is the touchstone of theology. Otherwise, the glorious Quran says in Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 110, Kulidullah Avidur Rahman, Ayam Atadu, Falol Asmal Husna. Say call upon him by Allah or by Rahman. By whichever name you call upon him, to him belongs the most beautiful name. You can call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by any name, but it should be a beautiful name. It should not conjure up a mental picture. And there are no less than 99 attributes given in the glorious Quran for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, most merciful, most beneficent. No less than 99. We Muslims, we call Almighty God by the Arabic name Allah. And the reason we prefer calling Almighty God by the Arabic name Allah instead of the English word God is because the English word God, you can play mischief with that word. For example, if you add S to God, it becomes God's plural of God. There is no plural of Allah. Qul huallahu ahad. Say he is Allah one and only. If you add D-E-S-S to God, it becomes goddess. That means a female god. There is no gender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is neither male, neither female. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has got no gender. Allah is a unique word. If you add a father to God, it becomes godfather. He is my godfather. He is my guardian. There is nothing like Allah father or Allah by in Islam. If you add a mother to God, it becomes godmother. There is nothing like Allah mother or Allah mean Islam. Allah is a unique word. If you prefix tin before God, it becomes tin God, meaning fake God. There is nothing like tin Allah in Islam. That is the reason we Muslims, we prefer calling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the Arabic word Allah instead of the English word God. But if some people, some Muslims, use the word God for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that those who don't know the concept of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if they can understand, I've got no objection. But the appropriate word is Allah. It's much more preferred than the English word God. In Islam, the universal brotherhood does not only spread horizontally. That is, it doesn't only cover all the regions and all the people of the whole world and universe. It even goes vertically. The universal brotherhood in Islam the universal brotherhood of faith includes vertically even the generations that came before you, that went in the past. The universal brotherhood in Islam includes the people living and the people of past. You are a single race. You are a single people. This universal brotherhood, that is the brotherhood of faith, it spreads horizontally as well as vertically. And the cornerstone of this faith, in all the religions, if you analyze, it is the belief in one creator, one almighty God. It is only because of this that universal brotherhood can prevail in the whole universe. And this universal brotherhood of faith, it is far superior to the brotherhood of blood relationships. The Quran says, as I mentioned, you should respect your parents. The Quran says in Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 23 and 24, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained for you that you worship none but him. And 
that you be kind to your parents. And if any one of them, or both of them, reach old age, do not say a word of contempt. Don't even say off to them. But lower to them your wing of humility, and address them with honor, and pray to thy Lord that cherish them as they cherished me in childhood. That means you have to love and respect your parents and give them all honor and respect. But at the same time, the glorious Quran says, in Surah Luqman, chapter 31, verse number 15, after saying that you have to respect the parents, the Quran says, but if they strive in making thee join partners with me, who you have no knowledge of, that means if your parents force you to join partners with Almighty God, you do not obey them. But in this world, deal with them with justice and compassion. That means your parents, you have to obey them as long as they don't go against Almighty God, against the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to obey them. If they go against the commandments, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Almighty God, is more superior. The brotherhood of faith is universal. It is far superior than brotherhood of blood relationship. And the Quran says in Surah Tawbah, chapter number 9, verse number 24, Kul in kana abaukum. Say whether it be for your fathers. Wa abnaukum, or your sons. Wa ikhwanukum, or your brothers. Wa azwajukum, or your spouses, your husbands and wives. Wa ashiratukum, or your relatives. Allah is asking, what are your considerations? Is it your fathers? Are they your sons? Your brothers? Your spouses? Husbands and wives? Are they your relatives? If all these things, for example, your father, or your sons, or your brothers, or your spouses, or your relatives, and Allah continues, the wealth that you have amassed, the business in which you deal, the house in which you live. Allah is saying, what your consideration? What are your considerations? And Allah continues, that Ahabba ilaykum min Allahi wa rasulihi wa jihadin fi sabilihi. If you love all these eight things more than Allah, his Rasul, and doing jihad, striving in the way of Allah, Allah says, if your parents tell you to go against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they may tell you to rob, they may tell you to cheat, they may tell you to bribe, they may tell you to kill people unnecessarily. If your parents give you guidance against the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether it be your sons, whether it be your brothers, or your spouses, or your relatives, or you do deeds against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the wealth that you are collecting, the business in which you deal, the house in which you delight, Allah says, if you love all these eight things more than Allah, his messenger, and striving in the way of Allah, Allah says, Patarabbasu, wait, hatta yati Allah bi amri, wallahu la ilkumul fasikin. Wait until Allah brings about his decision unto you, until Allah brings about destruction unto you, wallahu la ilkumul fasikin. And Allah guides not the poverty transgressors. Where it comes to brotherhood of faith, it is far superior to brotherhood of relationships. And further, the glorious Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 135, that, Ya amanu, O you believe, stand out firmly for justice as witness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if it be against yourself, against your parents, against your relatives, whether it be rich or poor, for Allah protects both. That means if you have to stand for justice as giving shahada, as giving witness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah says, stand for justice even if you have to speak against yourself, against your parents, against your relatives, irrespective of whether the people are rich or poor, for Allah protects all. That means, where it comes to justice, where it comes to truth, justice is far superior to blood relationships. The brotherhood of faith supersedes all the other brotherhood. And the brotherhood of faith the universal brotherhood is based on the basic concept of belief in one creator, one almighty God, one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is preached by all the religions. And the Quran says, as I mentioned earlier, in Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verse number 64, that, Come to common terms as between us and you, which is the first term, Allah, na'buda illallah, that we worship none but Allah. Only believing in one almighty God is not sufficient. You should also worship only one almighty God. 
and only if you believe and worship Almighty God, whose one will universal brotherhood prevail. Without the concept of one Almighty God, brotherhood and humanity cannot prevail in the full world. And the glorious Quran says in Surah Anam, chapter number 6, verse number 108, that revile not those people, abuse not those people who worship God besides Allah, lest in their ignorance they will revile Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I would like to end my talk by giving the quotation of the glorious Quran from Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 1, which says, Ya yuwanna suttaku rabbakum allazi khalakum min nafsiyu waida khalaka minha zawjaha that O oh, humankind, reverence your guardian Lord who has created you from a single person and created like nature his mate and has scattered like seeds countless men and women. Wa akhiru dawana alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. <laughs>